Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? That you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the Great Replacement Theory as it relates to I don't to have to answer these questions. The Great Replacement Theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that... I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Uh, otherwise, I would not do interview, this interview. So you don't think... You, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that there constantly. Was... I could care less. Yeah, it's it's couldn't care less. You know, I'm just I only point that out not to be pedantic, but because he's supposed to be one of the smartest people on the planet. So you'd think that he'd be able to get that. Uh, so that is Elon Musk versus Don Lemon. You're probably familiar at this point how this thing ended. So that's the Don Lemon show, which was going to have an exclusive deal with uh, Twitter, and it doesn't now because of that interview. He asked questions that were like kind of tough to Elon Musk. Elon Musk left, and as he was leaving, he texted his business team to cancel the deal. He had a petulant little temper tantrum, a hissy fit, and now Don Lemon doesn't get his deal. By the way, I'm not doing this segment like to speak out in defense of Don Lemon. I don't, I don't care about Don Lemon. I don't care about his career. I don't care about his business deals or whatever. He's an incredibly wealthy guy. He's gonna be perfectly fine regardless of what happens. I do like seeing a journalist ask a person, particularly a business person, tough questions. And while I'm not in the business of like trying to find things to give Don Lemon credit for, this is a guy who owns the platform that you have apparently a deal with, and you're asking him tough questions, which is, I'm not gonna say that it's objectively brave, but it's braver than we generally are led to expect journalists to be. So minimal credit to Don Lemon right there. But that said, Elon Musk said all of what he said there and thought that he looks cool coming out of it. That is always the thing about Elon Musk that at the end of the day really gets me. He thinks at all times that he's killing it. He thinks that him sitting there and saying, I don't have to answer questions. I don't have to answer questions. I could care less about the criticism. Like you you constantly whine about the criticism. Like you you could definitely care less than you do because you care. Like you inaccurately used it, but you revealed something true in doing so. You do care about that. And or look, you're not physically required to answer questions of journalists, but you decided to own this platform. You sort of put it on your own shoulders that that was going to be a thing that you'd be asked questions for. And and more so than it even needed to be. He had said, remember, when he bought it and made a couple of decisions that were uh, absolutely horrific ideas, stupid, stupid, stupid ideas. He said that he was gonna hand it over to a new CEO and he was gonna back off. That literally never happened, by the way, just to be clear. Another one of his claims about his businesses that turned out to be shockingly untrue. So if you are going to hug Twitter to you at all times, then yes, when it gradually descends even further into a bot ridden hate speech filled hell zone. Yeah, we're gonna have some tough questions for you or not even tough questions, literally just questions and he can't take it. And so in the same way that it's bizarre that this guy who has, he's had everything in the world given to him and has even more now can't take questions like that and thinks that lashing out the way he does makes himself look cool saying, I don't need to answer your questions or, when advertisers fled the platform and he was interviewed about it, saying, well, I don't want them, I don't want their money. We'll see what Earth thinks about them killing Twitter. He thinks that this stuff makes him look cool or tough or mature. He's a tiny little baby boy, that's who he is. And the only reason that he has the fan base that he does is there are other people who are tinier and babier and boyier. That's it, okay? He's been able to find some people who are somehow less equipped to deal with the real world than he is, and they're big fans of him. So anyway, look, we could go through all of the supposed arguments that is being made by Twitter as to why they cut it off. X business, again, X is such a stupid name, X, it's Twitter business. What's wrong with Twitter business? Anyway, they put out a whole tweet about how they were gonna do a deal, they still want diverse voice and perspectives. No, Elon Musk got, like we can go to Kara Swisher. He sent a text message, contract terminated. He just freaked out and killed it. And as always, he has an emotional outburst. And then everyone else around him needs to do the work of trying to make it look legit, trying to make it look professional. And you know, maybe it wasn't about the hate speech. Maybe it was that he was asked about ketamine use. So he was asked about his drug use. And you know, for a guy who like thought, he was, it was like cool branding to go on Joe Rogan and smoke weed or whatever. You would think that he wouldn't be so sensitive about being asked about his drug use since he's such a public user of drugs 
But there's been some critical coverage of the fact that not only is he apparently on a variety of different substances, but that he's been pushing it on other people. And there's a culture at his companies of if you don't take ketamine or do coke with him or whatever, allegedly, you could lose your positions. So I don't even think it's really about the personal criticism, although I have no doubt that he would freak out about that. It's that this reporting has demonstrated Beyond just the buffoonish statements or the fact that he makes anti Semitic comments or that every single day he tweets about the great replacement theory, he's bad for business. He makes execs worse, okay? Shareholders at some point are going to catch up to that. They, for some reason, have not, but they should. I saw a report yesterday, and this will be the final thing that we talk about here, about the tax that Tesla has paid to the federal government, or sorry, I should say the tax they haven't paid. Because they've paid effectively none over the last four years. Over the last four years, they've pulled in $4 billion, I believe. And 2.5 billion of that was given to the execs. I believe the top five executives pulled in 2.5 billion of the $4 billion that they brought in. Look, I can say that that is reason to hate Elon Musk. You know, Maybe that's not persuasive. But if you're an investor in the company, is that the way that you want the company to be run? Do you want it to be run by like a grown up man child who's trying to force drugs on people because he doesn't have any friends? Is that good for business? I think you could expect more. And I will also finally just point out because this is also in addition to everything else, as Don Lemon points out, I don't think you believe in free speech. It's a joke. It's always been a joke that Elon Musk or any of the people who claim to be free speech warriors actually care about it. They don't. I will remind you that on Twitter, they did a mass purge of journalists, including Donnie O'Sullivan of CNN. They purged them. They also, by the way, purged prominent journalists and leftists, including activists, including Ken Klippenstein himself. And just to be clear, those are separate purges. Those happened at different times. They just every once in a while, he sees that a journalist said something mean about him and he bans a bunch of people from the platform. But definitely a free speech warrior. Anyway, Don Lemon is gonna be fine. He was given a massive settlement by CNN, but I am at least glad that he was able to reveal Elon Musk for the ridiculous child that he is. <laughs>